All right, so reviewing from yesterday, solving systems of equations using substitution. Remember, our goal for substitution is the same goal as solving with tables or with graphs. What we want to find here is the intersection of these two lines. In other words, we want to find the x value and the y value that works on both of the equations, that works in both of the lines. So when one of the equations is in y equals or x equals form, we can use a method called the substitution method. If both the equations are in y equals form, then we'd like to use the graphs or the tables. But in this case, just one of the equations is. So solving by substitution means you're literally going to take one of the equations and substitute it into the other equation. In this case, you want to take the equation that is in y equals or x equals form and substitute it into the other one. In our example here, we have a y equals equation. The first one is y equals 2 plus 3x. That means y is literally equal to 2 plus 3x. So we can replace the y in the second equation with that 2 plus 3x, what y is equal to, 2 plus 3x. And I want you to put a little parentheses around the y in the second equation, make an arrow to that parentheses because that's where that 2 plus 3x is going. It's replacing the y value in the second equation. So now we're going to make a new equation with that substitution in it. So we're going to take the x minus 3 times, now in parentheses, instead of y, we're going to have 2 plus 3x, because that's what y was equal to. And that comes out to 10. So we're essentially writing that second equation just with that 2 plus 3x replacing the y value. Now we have to go back to our work from earlier this year and figure out, okay, how do we solve equations that are in this form? When you have a number in front of parentheses, hopefully you recall that the distributive property is really what we want to deal with here. So that means the number in front, the coefficient in front of the parentheses, we're going to distribute, we're going to multiply it times the first term, which is the 2, and we're going to multiply it by that second term, which is the positive 3x. Then we're going to write our new equation without the parentheses. So we've got the x. Now a minus 3, now that negative or that minus sign, that subtraction sign, really goes with the 3. So it's like a minus 3 times a 2. A negative 3 times 2 is a minus 6. And then that negative 3 times the positive 3x, a negative times a positive is always a negative. So minus 9x, and then we still have equals 10 out here. Then hopefully you recall next, when you see this, you're going to see a couple like terms, the x and the minus 9x. We need to combine those before we can go through and start doing any operations to both sides of the equation. So we're going to combine that x and the minus 9x. It's like a positive 1x minus 9x would be a minus 8x. 1 minus 9 is a negative 8. Okay, so those two are combined together. Now let's rewrite the equation again. So we've got the negative 6 minus 8x. Remember, it equals 10. All right, we're finally at the spot where now we can start undoing operations from both sides, working our way back to the x. Remember, it's a two-step equation. You start with what's farthest away from the x, and then we work our way towards the x. And I like to divide the equations into two sides. So I put the line down at the equal sign here. So hopefully you're looking at this and saying, okay, we're going to have to undo the minus 6 by adding 6 to both sides. That cancels out the minus 6 with the plus 6. We're still left with a negative 8x, minus 8x, equals 16. Next step, we have to undo the negative 8 by dividing both sides by negative 8. Remember, that's negative 8 times x, so we undo multiplication with division. That cancels out the minus 8, so we just have x left. We do the same thing to both sides. So now, finally, we have our, well, at least part of our solution. So we've got x is equal to 16 divided by negative 8 is negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is half of our solution. Remember, before we'd 
eventually just come down to x equals or y equals and that would be it. Well, solving systems, remember, is different because now we're looking for an intersection between two lines. That means we need that point, that x value and the y value where they both will intersect. So we need to take that negative 2 and we need to plug it back into one of the equations and figure out what the y value is going to be. Now technically you can plug it into either equation. It should work. You should get the same answer. However, the first equation is going to be easier to plug it into because it's already in that y equals form. So we're going to take that negative 2 and we're going to put it into that first equation for that x value because x is equal to negative 2, so we're going to replace the x with negative 2. So over on my other side of the paper here, I'm going to divide it, we're going to do the y part now. So y is equal to 2 plus 3x, but now we're going to replace that x value with what we found in the first part. We knew x is equal to negative 2, so we're going to replace x with negative 2. Now we just have to remember our order of operations. We can't add 2 plus 3, we have to multiply before we add. So we have to multiply the 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. So we have 2 plus negative 6, and 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4. So now we have the y value. Now remember, our solution is really a point, so it's best to write your final answer as a point with an x and y coordinate. So negative 2 is our x value, and negative 4 is our y value, and that really is our final solution. That is the intersection point between these two lines. If we were to make a table of both of these equations, we would come up with negative 2, negative 4 as the common point in both equations.